Hey guys, Zach here from MikeSoutdoors.com. Welcome to our first newsletter. Uh, we'll be doing this in video format. I'm going to release this one to the public so some of you other guys haven't that aren't signed up for our newsletter can kind of see what's in store. Uh, for you guys that are signed up for our newsletter, appreciate it. And what this is going to be, it's going to basically be a, a real short, real informal uh, video. We're not going to do title cards, intros, none of that stuff like that. No music, nothing. It's just basically going to be me here in my office talking to you about some of the videos that we've done in the last month or so. Uh, especially the product reviews, you know, kind of get a little more in-depth with some of the product reviews and answer some of the questions uh, about some of those. So it'll just give you a little bit more in-depth look at at our videos that we've done in the last month. So uh, if you haven't signed up for it, we'll put a link down in the uh, description of this video that you can click on. It'll take you right to the website site and it'll allow you to sign up for our newsletter there. It's the white box on the right hand side of the, the screen. If you click on the one on the left you're just going to be sending me an email. But So sign, to sign up, white box on the right hand side of the screen. Um, we did some bow reviews late last month. Um, I want to talk about those real quick. We did the Creed, the Chill, the ZXT, and the Ballistic. All those from Matthews. Uh, the Ballistic's actually from um, oh, Mission, which is a sister company of Matthews, they're kind of low-end stuff. Uh, of all those bows, I really, I liked all of them, you know, they were all pretty good bows, especially what you, what kind of quality you expect out of Matthews. Uh, of the three, the ZXT was probably my favorite. It had the better draw cycle out of all of them. Uh, felt, felt really nice in your hand and just, for me, it fit me really well. Uh, the Ballistic, for the money, is a, is a good bow. Uh, really, Draw cycle on it's not not great, you know. I say on a scale of one to ten, you know, ten being the worst, it's probably a five. You know, it's not horrible, but it's not butter smooth either. It's kind of what you'd expect out of a bow with that kind of aggressive cam on it. Um, but of those bows, like I said, the ballistic is a great buy. The chill and the creed, good bows. Uh, but for the money, I, I would prefer to have the ZXT over the over all of them. Uh, ZXT just fit me better. Uh, with the case with any bows, you know, when I do a review, it's just my opinion on that bow, and I try to keep it as factual as possible. But really, to make your choice, you need to go out and shoot all of those bows uh, and compare them for yourself and let the bow pick you. Uh, the other two that we did was the Spider and the Charger from Hoyt. Now, the Spider is an awesome bow, really nice. The air shocks really did seem to help. I noticed a little bit. Um, a difference in the vibration uh, from the spider to the charger so I, I don't know if that's the air ch or if it's the air shocks or if it's mainly because it's a better quality bow made with better materials but the charger did have a little bit more vibration than what the spider had uh, but the f spider felt great shot good man a draw cycle on it was really nice good back wall to it uh, pretty good speeds for Hoyt one cool thing about Hoyt is if they advertise a bow to do a speed, then it's going to do it. So that's a pretty cool, you know, most people inflate their IBOs. So when, when you see a Hoyt bow that's a little bit lower IBO rating, um, you know, don't be deceived by that because it's actually going to do it where some other bow companies say that their bows are going to do 340, 350. Most of the time, those are, are pretty unrealistic speeds. So Hoyt advertises a pretty good true world speed. Um... The Charger, of all the bows I shot, the Hoyt, the, the Matthews that day, uh, the Charger was by far my favorite. I like the Charger cam on it. Feels great, man. The draw cycle on that thing was awesome. And uh, when you got it back, you just don't even feel like you're holding any any kind of weight. Just a really good draw cycle, good back wall to it. Really like that bow overall. And the price, man, you cannot beat the price on that bow. It is an, For the money, you are getting an awesome, awesome bow. So um, if I was to go and I had a, had a thousand bucks in my pocket and money to burn, money to spend, I'd still been walking out of there with the charger. Because for 500 bucks or whatever the bow is, man, that thing is an excellent quality bow. And the accessory package on it, you know, the accessory package with most of these bows, um, you know, it's it's subpar. Most of them, they come with a, a plastic rest, plastic sights, you know, real cheap quiver, which is great to get you started, but most people I know are going to shoot them for one season or so and they're going to upgrade to, to something a little bit better quality made. Um, the Charger... The package that comes with it was high quality stuff. Uh, I mean, not, maybe not high high quality stuff, you know, but but uh, mid level stuff. Whereas normally with a package, you're getting low end stuff. So the package on that bow is is excellent. Uh, some of the other bow review or reviews that we did, we did the Firebox, which uh, is a portable hunting stove and a really cool little idea. You know, um, purposes for it for hunting. The company contacted me and asked me to do a review on it. 
Um, and I, I tried to show the meaning, the the uses of it as a hunting stove, which there's there's a lot of applications for it as a hunting stove. You know, going to deer camp and different things like that, like I discussed in the video. But my real feeling for the for the uh, stove is it like for me it's in my survival pack it's a good survival stove folds down nice lightweight you know you can use it for camping uh, different stuff like that when you're heading off the grid headed out into, into the trees and you know for us when we uh, when we go hunting if you want to just a small controlled fire it's excellent excellent for that because it keeps the fire nice and contained inside the box uh, small lightweight portable man that thing folds up nice so um, really good really good uh, product and really good little stove but I see it, me using it more for survival uh, and camping than I do for hunting uh, unless I go to deer camp or something I'll probably pack it with me when I go to deer camp but I, I don't hardly ever go to deer camp anymore so um, I really see that the the uses of that being geared more towards survival and uh, camping with that um, the review we've got coming up, we've got a Bowfinger 3.0 review coming up. Should be launched any day now. Uh, what it is is it's an adapter for your iPhone or your uh, smartphone, so you can film your hunts. Real quality made, like everything I've got from from Bowfinger. Things built like a tank. It's got vibration dampeners in it that that cradle your phone or cradle your. Um, I'm using a PlaySport on mine, so really, really like the uh, the vibration dampers in there and the quality of the thing. The man. The thing's built great. Uh, one of the things I really like about Bowfinger's product is the machining behind them. Um, the machining looks great. They're made out of quality material. I mean, they don't make them out of cheap material. I've, I've s tested a couple other bow product or uh, smartphone products and actually ended up sending them back to the companies uh, without doing a video on them because they were junk. Uh, one of them was from S4 and it was all plastic and it was just terrible. And I sent that to S4 and told them that they didn't want me doing a review on that because the thing was junk. So um, the Bowfinger 3.0 is, is nice because it's made out of, of uh, all metal construction. So it's nice and solid and well built. And everything from Bowfinger that I've tested. Man, you can't go wrong when you're buying a Bowfinger product. I'm using their Bowfinger 2.0. I'm using a 3.0 now on one of my bows. And I've got their Medusa Rest on one of my bows as well. And I'm a hardcore ripcord guy. Um, and I really like the, the Bowfinger. I've got it on actually on... The high country over here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the high country on the far side of that safe has a Medusa on it, and that's what I'm currently hunting with. It actually has the Bowfinger 3.0 on it as well, uh, sticking off to the side there. So that's that's what I'm going to be hunting with in the morning, and it's what I'm going to be doing my filming with. So really high quality stuff from Bowfinger. You really can't go wrong with them. Um, also done a, a video on maintaining your bow. Um, very, very important subject, man. I didn't touch on the importance in that video very much, but it's very, very important to maintain your bow, uh, mainly the strings. The strings are the lifeblood of your bow. If you bust the strings, it's just like cutting a femoral artery in your leg. Um, you're going to do some damage, and more than likely that bow is going to die. So um, modern bows with the limbs that they've got on them and everything like that, they can withstand... Uh, a dry fire and things like that, strings cut, maybe. There's a big maybe to it. Uh, but my feeling if they're, if I ever dry fire a bow, which I've been lucky I never have, and I've never cut the strings on a bow or had one break, but it compromises the bow. Man, it really, it, after that, you're just kind of leery about the limbs. It, uh, to me, it's not a question of when they're going to break, it's if they're going to break. And that's not the case, but in my mind, that's the way it is. Once I've, I've had one do that, uh, you know, people have brought in bows for me to work on and things like that. And um, man, I just always feel like they're compromised. And that's the reason why when you go into a shop and they, if you dry fire a bow, it's yours. It's because you can't hand that bow to someone else and expect the limbs not to break or something like that. So when it comes to maintaining a bow, you know, the most important thing on that bow is the strings. You got to keep them waxed and you got to keep them replaced. If they start to fray, they start to look bad, look like they're going to get uh, in bad shape change those things you know you can get two years out of a string uh, if you keep it good and waxed good and heavy waxed and, and wax it several several times a year I do mine at least once a month um, sometimes more especially when I'm shooting a lot or I'm doing a lot of hunting and the weather's bad um, so you can do that I got a uh, tablet here in front of me it keeps falling asleep on me with some notes on there but um, you know, so that's what we did on, on maintaining the bow, but that's the, the one of the subjects I didn't really hit on, and that I should have uh, emphasized more is, is your string maintenance. Uh, the other thing we did, we did a video on how to load a uh, muzzleloader and a side lock. 
uh, or how to load an inline and a side lock muzzle loader. And I did that because a lot of people out there just seem like they're, you know, a lot of guys that uh, don't use a muzzle loader seem kind of kind of wary about it. Seem almost kind of scared of them. But there's really not much to to be afraid of, you know, other than what a normal gun. Uh, the dangers of having a normal gun. Just to use your, your same protocol you would when you're firing a bolt action or semi-automatic or whatever and you'll be fine on that. The biggest thing is not to make to make sure it's not double loaded because if it's double loaded and that back charge goes off then you're gonna have some trouble and uh, I covered in the video a good way to do that is make sure your ramrod's marked so if you go down and you're not down to that mark and you're above that mark you know you're double loaded so that's a good a good measure to make sure and you know a lot of people like my wife she kind of made the comment about well aren't muzzle loaders known to be to blow up and that's a pretty common uh, misconception when it comes to muzzle loaders they're easy to load they're safe as can be the thing with people hearing about muzzle loaders blowing up usually comes from pistols um, a muzzle loader revolver the spark can actually jump from chamber to chamber and that's why when you load a muzzleloader revolver you take some uh, oh I can't remember what it's called now bore butter you take a dollop of bore butter and you put in the back of the cylinder and that will keep or the front of the cylinder I'm sorry uh, and that will keep it from jumping from cylinder to cylinder and blowing up so but most rifles I've never heard of a muzzleloader rifle blowing up or doing anything unless it was double loaded you know so that's a good way to keep you from double loading is to make that mark on your on your uh, ramrod so you know where it's at and if that mark doesn't go all the way down to it you know you got some some kind of trouble and you shouldn't shoot the gun um, the other th videos we've done lately we've been doing some squirrel hunting videos which we've been having some real good uh, success doing that we got a spot that just man the squirrels out there just overpopulated um, I've killed three Travis killed one the other day when we were out and uh, they're just everywhere out there and we're really doing it I love squirrel hunting it's fun but I haven't done it in years and uh, the reason I started again this year was population control the squirrels in there are so thick that the deer don't have anything to eat you know the squirrels are finding all the acorns and either eating them or hiding them and the deer just don't have anything to eat in there so uh, this property hasn't been hunted in a long time so we're, we're really gonna start hunting it hard next year me and Travis and um, and we want to have some nutrition there for the food, so we've got or for the deer, so we've got to thin out squirrels a little bit. So we've done some squirrel hunting videos. Uh, also did a um, rifle hunting video. I killed a um, I killed a little buck on opening day of, of rifle season. Been seeing a big buck, and I tried to get Lindsay on him, and man, he's just disappeared. And uh, during rifle season, we just did could not get Lindsay on a deer. And here's same thing with muzzleloader. It's muzzleloader season now, and I've taken her out three or four times, and just can't even see a deer. Every time we see a deer, it's running off. So I don't know. It just seems like the you know it seems like she's cursed. It used to be every time she went, she saw a deer. Now, you know, she seems like we seem like we can't get one in front of her. So um, been having good good success this year though. I've killed four deer this year and um just i mean having a, having a good year this is probably my last weekend of of bow hunting uh next weekend me and my brother are going to do some duck hunting and then uh may be able to squeeze in a few hunts after that but then with the holidays and everything and the ata show coming up is probably going to be my last weekend for hunting so i've got a doe tag and i've got an any deer tag and i plan on feeling both of them this weekend one way or another so it's this brown it's down is the rule this weekend for me and um if it comes in front of me and it's it's a deer it's going down so um so that's kind of what we've got what we've been doing this last month now we've got a real exciting time coming up here in the next all it starts january 6th and we'll be putting up a ton of videos in january from the archery trade association show in louisville kentucky we'll have the bowtech bows uh unveiling we'll have all uh, we've got a line up, or a um, time set up with Bowtech to have an exclusive with them and, and go shoot all the bows kind of away from everybody else and, and get a little bit of a get a little bit of time with each bow uh, so we'll be doing that from Bowtech and of course we'll be covering we're going to cover mainly the bows this year as well as the crossbows so we're going to cover as much as we possibly can there we're really not going to waste our time with with some of the smaller products there um, but we'll be doing a ton of uh, bow reviews crossbow reviews and then we'll be we'll be interviewing some companies that we've worked with in the past you know we'll be interviewing bowfinger talking to them and 
Uh, of course, we'll be visiting Hips Targets and Aaron and those guys and, and uh, Ed Humpert over at uh, Bad River. So, but, so keep an eye out for that. The, the bow reviews during the ATA show is always an exciting time of the year. And uh, we're really looking forward to, to getting there and, and trying out some of the new bows. So uh, this is the first in our, our monthly newsletters, first in the video format. Um, this is probably going to be the way it's going to stay, is just like this, you know, just pretty informal and just pretty much me sitting in front of a camera and talking. Um, like I said, we're going to release this one public, but if you want to continue to get these and you want to continue to um, get a little bit of insight into the products that we test and the videos that we've got coming up, you'll have to go sign up for our newsletter. And like I said, we'll put a link to that below, white box on the right hand side. And if you guys got any, any, um, comments I have a real hard time getting all my emails so I really am sorry about that but it's just really it gets overwhelming sometimes with everything I got going on and the amount of emails that I get so I'll try to answer the emails like if we do a bow review and you got a question about that and I I don't have time to address it or it's something really long that I don't have time to address I'll try to address that in these these videos these uh, monthly newsletters or new video newsletters whatever you want to call them so I appreciate you guys watching this appreciate you guys signing